Now I'm going to do the preview of the Baylor at Texas women's volleyball matches. And I'm saying matches because it's back-to-back -back matches against Texas on October 26th at 7 p.m. Central Time on FS1. And then the same time on October 27th, but on the Longhorn Network. And Baylor is coming off of a, an impressive sweep against number 24 UCF. And I expect Baylor to be higher in the rankings, like somewhere in the top 20, I would think. And Texas should be somewhere in the top 10. I just don't know for sure. And I'm going to put that in the title on both of these teams and where the ranking's at. So I'm just going to let you all know in advance. And Baylor is now 12-7 and seven overall, 6-3 and three in the conference. And they want to have one like five straight matches going into this. I mean, three sets to one win against Kansas State. Three sets to one win against Cincinnati twice. Three sets to one win against UCF. That's number 24 to country. And then a sweep today against number 24 UCF. So they're playing really high level. And granted, I do not know why Kendall Stowers for Baylor has not been playing up to this point in time so it is it is what it is on that but now what are some players and I want to go over like the Texas stuff first overall as a team and in, like in, in addition like to conference wise they're not even know in a conference 14 and 3 overall but I will say they're not as good as last year's team, but they're still good. It's just not like top five or top three good for sure. I mean, they lost to Long Beach State early on. They lost to Stanford at home, three sets of nine. They even lost to Washington State, three sets to one at home. And they're coming off of a, a really close win against TCU at TCU. i tell you this much right now, three sets of two. That's the first one they played this year, and it was in five sets overall. I mean, they lost the first set in 25-14, then won the second, 25-22, but then they lost the third, 25-21, but they got the last two 20, by a combined four points. 25-23, then 15-13. to 13. So you get the point on Texas. They're not as invincible, and they nearly lost to TCU at TCU. But I'm still going to say they're a good team. Texas is definitely a good team that can make a run. And I'm going to put the stats in the description below so y'all could see it as well as the roster for for Texas here. And I'm going to tell you right now some, what are some players to keep an eye on right here. Number one is Ella Swindle. A six foot three inch setter that's a freshman. She leads the team in assists, obviously. Four and three kills on 124 attempts with 14 er attacking errors. 588 assists, 18 service aces, 28 service errors, 123 digs. 52 blocks, though. Four of those are solo. Three ball handling and uh, blocking errors, seven ball handling errors. Emma Halter, number two, is another player. Keep on, that's a five foot five inch libero. That's a sophomore. 67 assists, 20 service aces, 9 service errors, 16 receiving errors, which is the most on the team. 229 digs, that, and one ball handling error, that's it. Now, Bella Bergmark is the next player to keep it on. line. She's a 6 foot 2 inch middle blocker, that's a, a senior, though she might have another year of eligibility, but I'm not. Positive on that, but anyway. 90 kills on 204 attempts with 22 attacking errors, 2 assists, 2 service errors, 1 receiving error, 10 digs, 71 blocks. 6 of those are solo and 5 blocking errors. Madison Skinner, of course we know Avery Skinner, that's her sister. That's a, and Madison Skinner is number 6, 6 foot 2 inch junior, that's an outside hitter. Her second year at Texas, she leads the team in kills, 276 kills on on 653 attempts with 92 attacking errors, 12 assists, 21 service aces, which is the most on the team, 26 service errors, which is the most on the team, too, tied for most, 12 receiving errors, 123 digs, 37 blocks, four of those are solo, two, four 
blocking errors, two ball handling errors. Asia O'Neill, which is Jermaine O'Neill's son, by the I mean daughter, by the way. I, I apologize. I didn't mean to say son. I meant daughter, but you kid. Daughter for sure. Six foot three inch middle blocker that's a senior. And 92 kills, 194 attempts, 15 attacking errors, four receiving errors, nine service aces, but 26 service errors. That's the most on the team. 38 digs, 82 blocks, which is the most on the team. Four of those are solo, by the way, and three blocking, er blocking errors, one ball handling errors. And by the way, on Bella Bergmark, she is a fifth year. So I'm going to... That's not clear about her right now. So in Asia O'Neill's the same way. She's a fifth year. So we don't have to play against them again. Because I know after this, after these two next two matches, we're only going to play them once, like home, like in non-conference, I would think. That's where McGuire, McGuire said, as part of the plan for the non-conference, to play them like at least once a year type of deal so the next player to keep an eye on is Carissa Barnes number 10 a 5 foot 7 inch defensive I mean, I mean libero that's a redshirt senior which I will see if she's a fifth year or not oh she's just a fourth year but remember there is a COVID year in there potentially I mean she only has one kill on one attempt 18 assists 20, 10 service aces 21 service errors 8 receiving errors 121 digs that's it Kia La Kia Nile Ekana K-E-O-N-I-L-E-I is the next player keep an eye on 5 for 9 inch Libera that's a junior No kills on two attempts, 27 assists, 17 service aces, 20 service errors. 12 receiving errors, 99 digs, that's it. Jenna Wienas, W-E-N-A-A-S. And I apologize if I worked at that name, and it's a six foot one inch outside hitter, that's a junior. 167 kills, which is most on, a second most on the team, by the way. On 486 attempts, which is the second most on attempts, 66 attacking errors, five, five assists, one service error, five receiving errors, 37 digs, 28 blocks, four of those are solo, one blocking error. Molly Phillips, number 15, is the next player to keep an eye on. A six foot five inch opposite, that's a senior, which, once again, I don't know, it's a COVID senior or what, but if she has a COVID year or not, well, I'll have to wait and see. After I say all the stats here, 76 kills on 226 attempts, 31 attacking errors, one service ace, one dig. That's it. And the last player to keep an eye on is number 44, Devin Kaha Hawaii, or something like that. I apologize. K A H A H A. I'm going to start over again. K A H A H A W A I. And by the way, Molly Phillips is a fifth year, so yeah, she's done after this, too. And six for four, and Devin is a six for four inch outside hitter that's a sophomore, by the way. That is a, yeah, outside six foot four inch outside hitter. That's a sophomore. And she's only played 28 sets this year. I'm just going to point that out right there. 40 kills, 121 attempts, 22 attacking errors, three assists, 12 digs, 16 blocks. Two of those are solo, three block, blocking errors. I'm going to say this up front with that. You can't go in there and just look at the jersey and say, well, I'm not going to lose. First of all, TCU nearly beat them. And second of all, 
they have lost twice at home. But granted, it's against Washington State and Stanford. I know. And you just cannot let that mentally get into your head about this match. And I don't know whether or not Kendall Stowers for Baylor is going to even play in this match. If she doesn't play, you got to have Riley Simpson step up like she did in the UCF match today. And she stepped up big time. you got to have all the other players step up and do their roles individually. I would also say across the board, limit your errors. Especially the attacking ones. The service ones, it's important to serve well. And I, of course, it there is some risk with when you try to get service errors particularly, I mean, service aces particularly, if you know what I mean. You just got to be aggressive. Of course, we we have to make, of course, I don't want to play safe on the serves either. We don't give them so much time. But you get the point in all this. You got to serve well and keep Texas, uh, get Texas uncomfortable in this match offensively I would obviously say that and you got to play solid defense across the board in this match and play with nothing to lose it's simple though I will say you got to have good passing in there that would help especially against Texas and you want to set up your kills of course you want to vary up the offense and have good transition offense too and you kind of have to make adjustments on the fly, not just from match one to match two, but during the match as well. And of course, you got to do well on side outs because those aren't pouring. We don't want to let Texas be so good on side outs either. I'm just telling the truth in that, by the way. And I know what we did over the weekend against UCF is pretty impressive. After losing our first set against UCF in the first match, we won six straight sets against that team. That's impressive. But I will say, Texas is a higher level. Like we gotta come out with energy from the start. Of course, you gotta be consistent throughout. I'm just telling the truth, and we don't wanna have like out of rotation stuff. Of course, we don't want errors. We wanna reduce that as much as possible. Of course, you gotta be smart with that too. And if Kendall Stowers does play, that would be helpful. But even without her, we got to have other players step up. In the serving category, the passing category, you got to dig every ball. Of course, have a little variety on offense because we don't want to be so predictable. And if one, if they're going to take our outsides away, attack through the middle. But if they take the middle away, kind of like the, in the UCF match a little bit, they were jumping on it, we go to the outside. I mean, and try to attack from the, like, from like, and not just straight through the middle like, in terms of like straight down the line here you know what I'm talking about like when the middle like feed the ball at the middle position you go that to the left or to the right and of course you could still swing towards the middle but at a different angle or course go down the line or tip or spike the ball but of course like I said you gotta have your you gotta serve well in this match you gotta scrap hustle every and try to get every ball you can against Texas and you cannot let that home crowd environment for Texas get into your heads and let and try to intimidate you because you don't want to be intimidated that's the last thing you want to do you got to go out and do what you can and I know this is a stat that's insane in the Big 12 format when they have played back to back matches Ryan McGuire is 17 and 1 the only one loss he's had is against Texas. So just take it away as you will. But he does make adjustments pretty handily. I mean, does pretty good in his staff as well on making adjustments from match one to match two. But I know this is possibly a hard match here, and we had never won in Austin before. Baylor hasn't. But why not do it? And the last year of the Big 12 when Texas is going to have be in a conference here, why not? You got to play with nothing to lose. You got to not let Texas get comfortable at all and make and try to take away their best players as much as possible or try to limit 
the other players as well and try to not make them as efficient. Of course, you don't you want to block them as much as possible. Of course, you want to limit their blocks on you. So I'm just telling the truth and all this. And I'm like I said before, I am going to put the roster and the stats on Texas in the description below so y'all could see it. Because it's important to know some of these players. Of course, I would also say you guys see it serve strategically as well. I mean, you got to do that. And, of course, you want Texas to get out of the system. Of course, if there's a free ball for Texas, you got to, and it comes to us, you got to take advantage of it. And in addition, you don't want to give so many free balls to them because, that, dude, <laughs> you don't want to mess with Texas on that. And their middle block, their setter, by the way, like I said, is a freshman, but she's six foot three. So, yeah, and she could block, as you could tell by the numbers. I mean, it's the truth when you look at it. I mean, she's even got more blocks than some of these other players. I mean, it's like an outside hitter or. You know, outside hitters and even opposites. She's got that many, a little bit more in blocks. Of course, you don't want to have blocking errors. Like I said, you got to limit your errors across the board. And you try to play as clean as possible in this match. So, let's go in there and play with nothing to lose. And be the aggressor. And make them on the defensive. With or without Kendall Stowers in this match. Of course, like I said, you got to make adjustments on the fly. Not just during the match, but from game match one to match two. And this is a good test for us where we're at. With or without Kendall Stowers and where we could improve going forward. Because the schedule does line up after Texas. I mean, they got Oklahoma the following week then in Texas Tech they're not ranked the same thing goes for TCU you even played them twice before then your last like then your next possible ranked opponent in Kansas and that's even on the road then you got a home game against West Virginia Houston at home so really two more ranked opponents after this so but even then you get Houston at home and that's the very last match of the year and that's helpful I mean, it is very helpful to have that. And granted, I know Kansas is on the road, but we'll get to those other matches when I, it comes closer. By the way, I'm just saying that because, look, it's a good way to see where you're at regardless and improve from not just from match one and match two, but going forward as well. And let's try to get a good quality win to help us get a potential top 16 seed at this point. I mean, that's the truth. And it would help the RPI as well. So, and of course, we got to take care of business against teams that we should beat. In addition, like get some quality wins like Kansas and Houston, maybe even Texas, but I'm just saying maybe because I'm not positive about that one. But you get the point. You got to take care of business against teams that you should beat. And then you got to beat Houston and, and Kansas to help getting more ranked wins in there and let's try to take be keep this momentum going where we have here until the next match matches against texas and then we'll improve from there for the rest of the year so anyways if you like this content like and subscribe and see you guys later on the road to 600 subscribers of course the ultimate goal is a thousand so i can make we can make money off of this of course liking the video commenting on the video really helps the youtube algorithm some more people can see it. Of course, if you're watching and you're not subscribed, please subscribe and of course hit the notification bell. If you have subscribed but not hit the notification bell, please do so. Because sometimes you just don't get notified. It's important to get to notify which video when it occurs. I know sometimes it has some glitches here and there, but you get the point. And I would greatly appreciate y'all if y'all would share the video as well. So that's all.